Well, how about this for a change? It's a riverbank I've come to today, and I suspect I'm going to have my work cut out. I'm Bob Nutt, and despite being world course angling champion on no less than four occasions, I know tackling fast flowing water will always be a challenge. The River Severn here in Worcestershire will certainly be demanding, but no matter how tough it gets, I'm never happier than when I'm going fishing. And having the chance to do just that, visiting waters all around the country in search of so many different species for this series has been a real treat. And without further ado, I'll get started on today's quarry, the brilliant hard-fighting barbel that will always give me a run for my money. It's a bit mucky. This is what normally happens though when a river has been up and in flood and this is what's happened here. It's dropping down now so it leaves dead leaves and mess but us fishermen are used to that, it doesn't matter. What really matters is that the fishing should be good. If you look to the other bank you'll see the white water on the surface. This is caused from the, from the weir upstream. That tells me that's where the most pace is. If we come to this side of the river, the pace is dropping off a bit. So I, I really want to capitalise on this area, this third of the river, where the pace is a little bit less. And I'm going to fish with a feeder. Use the flow of the river to try to att attract the fish into my area by casting downstream in the same place with pellets, ground bait and pellets, and create this area. Use the flow of the river to draw the fish in. And there's some big barbel on this stretch. The barbel run to about 15 pounds. I don't think I'll catch one that big, but I could do. I'm really excited by it. It's messy, it's mucky, it's horrible, but it'll be brilliant for fishing. Let's go and get my gear. Cheers. My battle plan for today is to use an open end feeder packed with ground bait, fish meal ground bait because they've got lovely smells, and four millimeter halibut pellets, which are these. They're fairly small. If you look at the one that I'm going to use, I'll drop those in there on the hook. That's what I intend to use on the hook. See that big one there? That's an eight millimetre. So I'm gonna use that on the hook and feed with the others. That then will, that big one will really stand out for the fish. You imagine taking all those little ones and then they see this really big one to go on. And that's fixed onto the line there with a hair rig and a stop. The hook is there so they just suck up the pellet, the hook goes in and really the fish almost hook themselves. The ground bait, I'm going to use to draw the fish into my peg. It will drift down further than the pellets, so the, they will come from much, much longer distance and gradually end up on the pellets on my main feed area. And I know I'm going to catch some barbel today. that ground bait with those four millimetre pellets. And really you have to work out how tight to push that ground bait in, it just depends on the flow, but a light squeeze is enough. And then think about where you're going to cast to and try to keep the cast in the same direction all day long. I've picked a marker on the far bank to cast to. And I've worked out my distance. It's not possible to use a line clip. These fish are so strong when they take that if you use a line clip, you can lose the fish. So you have to try and judge the distance. And I'm looking to draw the fish into my area. Let the feeder hit the bottom. A 
and then just sit back and wait for the action. <laughs> I don't believe this, I'm in already. First cast out. I thought I'd have a little throw out just to see if there's any fish there. <laughs> and I mean straight away. <laughs> Feel a clutch gun, I've got to be careful. I know on this swim, there's a big snag down, sort of between me and the fish. I really want the fish to go out a bit, so I can then pull it round. But the clutch is going. This feels like a barbel, and barbel always hug the bottom, so they find every snag that there is. Oh, what a start. It's just coming now, that worked. Try and keep him up. <laughs> Putting maximum pressure on this fish. I think I'm gonna have to stand up to try and... Feels like a really good fish. Clutch is going all the time. <laughs> Just wanna get it round in front of me, then I think I'll be safe, there. I think that's good. Oh dear. Oh, there's lots of snags here. Well, that was a shock. Oh, oh, oh. oh dear, what a fight. First fish of the day and it's a big one. Oh, really some effort. Tighten that clutch up a little bit. I think I'm over the worst. <laughs> These fish are fantastic fighters. It's got to be a barbel. You either catch barbel or chub in these conditions. But this has got to be a barbel. Got to be. How big is it? Is it that 15 pounder? No, it won't be that. But it'll be a big fish. Just a clutch on the reel is ticking over all the time as I'm pulling. Oh, just caught a glimpse of it on the surface. They're used to fighting the currents and they're streamlined. They're built for fighting like this. <laughs> oh. And it's starting to brighten up just a little bit. As I said earlier, it was a bit mucky and a bit messy, but there's a little bit of sun, it's quite warm. <laughs> and the fish doesn't want to come in. I've got some really strong, powerful gear on here as well. I don't really want it to get on the bottom. There, just caught a glimpse of it there. Oh, what a fish. Oh, that is a big, big fish. Oh, oh just got it in the net. <laughs> Oh dear, what a start. Is it a double? It is big. No, it's not big, it's enormous. Hook just in the lip. Well, that took about two minutes to get that bite. I don't believe it. Let me pick the fish up so you can see it. Oh dear, I'm gonna keep the net just below it because I, it still won't have finished its fight yet. And what a fight. Just let it relax. When you try to hold the fish, let it relax. And look at that. Look at its dorsal well up. And you can see, if you look, the long, slim fish, you can see, can you see distinctly? The, it's got four barbels, four long barbels, which it uses to find its feed. Typical river fish, but a big one. Oh, what a fantastic start. As I thought, this is quite a challenge, but take a look at this magnificent river. The Severn is one of the ten major rivers of the United Kingdom. All along this stretch there are some brilliant pegs where I know there have been some fantastic matches and you couldn't ask for a better looked after environment. For the Pleasure Angler too, it's an absolute delight. There are barbel here weighing up to 15 pounds and with excellent chub, bream, dace, roach and gudgeon as well, what more could any angler ask? With the River Severn running from the Cambrian Mountains of Mid Wales all the way through to the Bristol Channel, it flows through many counties. 
but we're in Worcestershire, between Stourport and the cathedral city of Worcester itself, surrounded by the rolling hills of a classic English landscape. Here at my peg, I've been busy just tying a, a longer hair rig. I thought I'd experiment with a chunk of meat. Hair rig was something developed by the carp anglers and match anglers have taken to it because you can hook your fish. It might have helped me hook it, but will I land it? I'm on the River Severn today, and I'm hooked into a bashful barbel who doesn't want to play ball. Still hanging on. It's almost there. What a fight, these fish. Barbel, fantastic fighting fish. Loads of snags there as well. I had to get it round. Oh dear, that was an effort. <laughs> I've got really strong gear on. Not as big as the first one, but still a, still a lovely fish. Oh, yeah. Out of breath. That was a fight. I just changed over to that hair rigged me. Look at the hook just inside the lip. Beautiful, beautiful barbel. Just rolling a bomb round. Let me show that to camera. That is Ooh, a lovely fish. What a fight. They are the most beautiful streamlined fish. Look at that. Built for speed and power and strength. This really is fantastic fishing. What is a hair rig? A hair rig is where you have the hook completely exposed. If you look at that there, I've got the hook. You can see it, it's a size 14, a big strong hook. Have to have a strong one for these barbel, they'll straighten it. And then the pellet itself is, is mounted on a hair, on a piece of line coming, can you see, coming from the hook. There's a small stop on the back so that when the fish suck that bait in, they suck the hook in, they feel the hook, they make a bolt, and they really they hook themselves. So that's the principle of a hair rig. It's, it's just so that the bait doesn't stop the hook from penetrating into the fish. A, something like this, a hard pellet, you imagine trying to hook it anyway, you wouldn't be able to do it and you'd never be able to hook the fish. And then, this is a two ounce feeder, quite a heavy one because the river's going through a bit, packed with that ground bait and pellet so that that will lay on the bottom and your pellet is laying below there so, that, so it's there exactly where the smaller pellets are coming out. They look for the big pellet and take it. That's the principle. That's what caught me, that big fish, really early on. Then I thought I'd try something different. I went on then to, there's a lot of colour in the water, so I went on to a real smelly bait. I thought, let's try and create a smell. So I've got a big piece of meat here. Once again, I've hair rigged the meat. So the line is going through, I've put a stop. Don't know if you can see that, probably a little bit dirty, but there's a little stop on the back, so that it's quite tough me to hold it on. So that when the fish, once again, when the fish suck that bait in, that last fish, this is exactly what I caught it on, suck that in, sucks the hook in, and hooks itself. The line is around about nine pound breaking strain. So that's the hook length, about two foot long of nine pound breaking strain. And then the real, quite a simple rig, there's a small swivel just there. That joins, I've got a running loop. If I can, I can really slide that lead there along. It's just on a running loop, so that it sits away nicely. 
and I've I've put a link swivel there so I can change, I can put, if I want to, I can put a feeder on, I can put a bigger bomb on, this is a one ounce bomb, I can put a two ounce on, I can swap about just by undoing that little link swivel. And the main line is 0.25 millimeter, it's probably about 10 or 11 pound braking strain, the main reel line. You need, once again, you need good, strong gear. The tip I'm using is a four ounce tip today, so it's, uh, it's, perfect for this sort of flow, the, the, the river's pulling it around a bit so you need a good stiff tip and a 13 foot powerful rod, you need a powerful feeder rod for these barbel. Just roughened that meat a bit on the edges, just picked at it a bit so, so little bits hang off it. I'm going to try that again though, that was really successful. I've got a one ounce bomb on there, so and I'm letting it run, casting a little bit across the stream. And then letting it run, hits the bottom and then letting it run back. You'll see the tip. will move, you'll see the tip will move just as it comes round, you'll see the, the lead bouncing on the bottom there. See it bouncing? Just letting it settle and come round. There you can see, just so the bomb is a... I don't want it to hold in position until it comes in line, more in line with me downstream. That's when I want it to go. <laughs> How could you miss a bite like that? Oh, I don't believe it. When you get to see your first barbel, it's a magical experience. And as a species, this fish is well worth targeting. However, it's not the easiest fish to catch though. Barbel are widespread in rivers all around the country. Here I am on the River Wye, in the most torrential weather enjoying one of the best barbel sessions of my life. Fast flowing, oxygenated water is a must. And be sure to head for the stretches with gravel and weed, which is where the barbel finds a plentiful food supply. One of the reasons they are quite tricky to hook is their shy nature. When you find the ideal spot, there are lots of baits to try. Pellets, luncheon meat, corn, maggots, and casters will all work for you. But you will need to be patient Anything that creates a scent trail will help, so oily baits can be very successful, while loose feeding hemp seed can also give you an added advantage. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Clutch is just gently, gently going. Keep out in the river. Oh, these really are hard fighting fish, and I've got the strongest, the strongest of gear. Oh, I took line then. The clutch is just gently ticking away if it needs to. And I flick off the anti reverse to give me a little bit more. So if it really runs, try and keep his head up here. Lots and lots of action here because the fish really want to get in snags. Can't. Can't really give it any quarter. Now the sun's gone in now. Sun's been in and out all day. Never tell. Just caught a glimpse of the fish then. <laughs> you can see why people come for these fish. You can see why anglers love to catch barbel. The power, the natural power of the fish. Trying to keep it well up out of those snags. Really fighting hard. Hey, is it a big chub? No, I'm guessing it must be a barbel. It took a took a massive lump of meat, like just like that last one. It's not a massive fish though, it's big, but blimey the fight. Oh no, it is a good fish. 
I'll get a bit blase after the first fish. Oh, what a fight. Just that hair rig meat was the killer. I can take a sit down now. I think I deserve a rest. <sighs> Who said fishing wasn't hard work? Oh. oh, it is a lovely fish. Another big fish. Oh, just full of power. So much power, so solid. God, only just hooked, just, just a little tiniest bit in its mouth, but the combination of the clutch, the hair rig meat to get the, get the hook home. Ah, got, really got to watch these fish, because just as you turn them over, they like to flick and go flying off into the distance. There. Another perfect example. Beautiful, streamlined fish. That's where they get their power from. They're just built for speed, built for fast waters. Well, I think that's a great fish to end the program with. Beautiful barbel fishing on the seven.